This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron, on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to talk professional wrestling on a Wrestling Mayhem Show. 596 Tuesdays we've been celebrating this wonderful uh, sports entertainment thing that happens on our TV every week. Uh, with me, I got a whole crew with us tonight. First of us, first of all, joining us from Johnstown, P- Pennsylvania. I forgot where he lived. He is Bobby FJ Town. What the hell is going on? Oh. I'm ready to kick some ass tonight. <laughs> I love how he said he has an Asuka uh, uh, mask and he seductively bites it. Have you been working on your Asuka impressions? Is that what's happening? No. 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 That's going to haunt my dreams forever. Yes. (laughs) That's going to enhance my dreams forever. Oh, geez. Also, you heard the voices. Mutilator Larry is here tonight. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good, good. I'm good. Ready to talk some wrestling? Good. Yes, wrestling. Excellent. Sports entertainment. And you heard the other voice. Uh, It is BC Steel, manager extraordinaire. Yes, Bulk Nasty, Chris LaRusso, Golden Sheik, and anybody else that I can sink my teeth into. A what? Yep. Okay. The new guy at my office. And the new guy at your <laughs> office. <laughs> yes, he will be super kicking you on Monday. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thank you for joining us in the new studio, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a much more svelte BC Steel from the last time I was on the show. Oh, yeah? Yes, much more svelte. Nice. And, uh, and, uh, well, you, you recently had a, your first match in years. Yeah, and that will also be my last in, match in, in, in years. In July. And is that what you're getting in shape for then? Uh, no, I got in shape because uh, my physical, my doctor just laughed at me. He's like, you are horrible. <laughs> so I figured uh, losing 30 pounds and would uh, enhance my beauty as well. Mm. Some might say I'm four loco beautiful. Oh. 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 oh okay. Correction. You are four loco pretty. I'm working my way to four loco beautiful. There you go. Correct. Well, thank you so much for joining us again. And thank you, everybody, for joining us here on the live stream and downloading on your podcast and watching on the video versions as well. Again, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. See this and so many other podcasts, including our Raw Wrap-Up, our Midweek Wars, and the Indie Mayhem Show. We've been talking with some great people. Great conversation last week with uh, uh, Marcus Mann uh, coming up with uh, Justin Idol. We'll return interview with him, one of our first interviewees that we had in the uh, coming weeks. We're going to have Laura Loveless on as well. And a, a, a great uh, back catalog of interviews that we've had over there. You can also check us out um, online. First of all, you can drop us a line at good that email address. Good times. Good times, I was good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or 412-206-WMS0. And we got a voicemail. I missed the voicemail last week uh, for our big question. That will be coming up this episode. Uh, also, uh, Twitter at Mayhem Show. Facebook, Wrestling Mayhem Show. We have a Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group with a lot of great conversation happening in there throughout the week that's been a lot of fun and of course you can uh, also join us here live every tuesday at 10 p.m eastern on uh, specifically on the facebook is where a lot of the chatters are joining us but we also are streaming on our youtube page on the sorgatron media twitch and on our periscope so whatever is the easiest for you to catch the mayhem show uh we encourage you to do that and share it share it if you're digging this right now hit that share button hit the like button and share the mayhem with the people also, thank you to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. You guys are literally keeping the lights on here in the uh, Sorgatron Media Studio, uh, including our fan of the show, $1 level, Bo Diggity! Woo! Woo! Ed Burke and Bobby F.J. Town. That's you, Bobby. Woo! 
And at the yeah, and at the Ooh. five dollar hockey club level, those guys are getting wrestling mayhem show gold, including a story about New Jack uh, from BC Steel. <laughs> uh, our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling, power to the smarts on Twitter. Tina Keys and Christopher Bishop, and at the Pizza Club ten dollar level, he gets the state of the show on top of everything else. Billy F and Johnson, and we do also have a manager level at the twenty dollar level. Uh, where uh, you can uh, get an exclusive download from our partners at IndieWrestling.us if you join us there. Again, these are funds that go into the show and the cost of doing the show. And uh, the more people that get on this, the more we can do with Wrestling Mayhem Show and maybe more versions of the show uh, we can have uh, you know, coming up as well and, and, and expand the Mayhem Nation. So, uh, so the big thing this week is Survivor Series, I'm told. Um, and, 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 and it seems like we always forget about it until this time of year. War and games. we're getting... Okay, we'll talk about war games later. But, 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 but you know, it is, you know, takeover's there. It's going to be another multi-day stand, you know, in Houston this year, right? Um, last year, they showcased uh, Brock Lesnar and Goldberg as, as a huge money match. They're really treating this as... You know, like they do SummerSlam, like they do, you know, two, two, like the WrestleMania weekends, it seems, right? Yeah, it, it used to be one of the big four. That was one of their big pay per views that I think it used to be on Thanksgiving night, but mm-hmm. uh, pulling in John Cena, pulling in Triple H, having that big main event match where you have it's five on five and you've got, I would say, six main eventers, seven main eventers, oh, if, yeah. not, if not eight to nine, because Braun Strowman's in there, Samoa Joe. Bobby Roode might be the lowest guy on that uh, on that totem pole. So that shapes up to be pretty interesting. As long as they keep the brand separate outside of this and WrestleMania, I think it can be continue to be something special. But mm-hmm. as, Rumble too. That, well, yeah, Rumble. That's a good point. Rumble too. As seen with the brand split previously, though, they kind of got away from it, and then it was kind of mushed back together so it'll be interesting to see going down the line how they handle that and we did this a little bit last year but it was like we had our couple of survivor series matches this thing is mostly the whole card except for one kickoff match with the cruiserweights yeah um so bigger stakes the invasions that both uh uh, have done raw came back and invaded smackdown tonight and got them back uh leading into the pay-per-view so i mean it you know granted there's not a lot on the line as far as titles i guess you can say Kurt angle's job is on the line um but it's something different through the year to look forward to i feel also his fatherhood also his fatherhood <laughs> is on the line that would be weird if the, if custody of jason jordan who is on a pool match i mean it worked out really <laughs> good last time they did this match. you know what uh, Bring in Judy Bagwell, throw her up on a pole too, and <laughs> and we'll have WCW two thousand. Why are we at it? Shel- I'm so Shelton sad. Benjamin's mom. Yeah, she can be on a pole too. Everybody's mother on a pole. Absolutely. Um, but no, I, I think I, you know a lot of great talent in that uh, five on five traditional Survivor Series, and I'm glad that we we're back to that. The Survivor Series really just kind of was just another show for so so long, right? It was like a redheaded you, stepchild. It, it really produce. was. Yeah. Because they they didn't they didn't yeah. there was no point to the Survivor Series matches you know yeah, there, there was a point where they didn't even really do Survivor Series no matches. it was just a show it was just a show uh maybe they threw some some of the the mid carters in a Survivor Series match and nobody cared yeah. right and I think they had Elimination Chamber the one year too right maybe a couple of years right 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 that was not the Survivor Series format it's like they were kind of re- rebranding it a little bit yeah. to the, oh it means this actually and and. Okay, I get like, you know, Survivor Series was great when it first started because you didn't see Hulk Hogan in the same ring as the Legion of Doom. Yeah. You know, or, or whatever those team ups were, or Ultimate Warrior, Legion of Doom, or or you know, you know, stuff like that. Like th- that was really cool to see those kinds of combinations. And everybody mixes it up with everybody these days, right? So that there's no appeal to that. Um, but but I think this is I think they're doing a really good job of uh, kind of pulling that together. Of course, last week we had the, uh, the kind of swap around with uh, AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar, which I, I swear this is the this is the match that people on the street are talking to me about, right? Uh, our friends at Slice on Broadway uh, uh, brought it up today. Uh, other people that I'm running into are saying, "Man, they really they really kind of hosed gender on that, didn't they?" You know, like this is there is there is buzz around this for this pay per view. It's a it's a unique dichotomy of style, oh, fifty cent word. 
Oof. unique dichotomy of styles. Uh, AG's, he's an announcer or something. Uh, <laughs> credit to Joe Nebrowski for carrying me. Um, but it's it's AJ Styles, the high flyer, the the I think one of the best, if not the best wrestler in the world today. Mm-hmm. And you also got Brock Lesnar, the legit tough guy UFC. So it's going to be interesting to see kind of what they do. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be a lot of uh, Brock Lesnar throwing around AJ Styles. It's going to be a lot of kind of AJ using quickness versus Brock using power, that that basic story. But kind of came out of left field, too. He, he got the title, what, last week on SmackDown? And yeah. there's a two-week build. But they're really throwing everything at it. Like I said, Triple H, John Cena, uh, AJ against Brock. I'm actually interested to see now, after tonight's results, Charlotte and Alexa Bliss. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. those are, I think, that's going to be huge. And I don't think that's been done one on one. I think Charlotte me. lost the title to Alexa Bliss Did on she re- Raw before she went over. Well, if I remember to, right. I am going to fire my uh, research guy. He did not. I, I might be wrong. <laughs> I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Charlotte, her last match was a loss to Alexa Bliss. On I, Raw. I think I've missed a year. Like, I forgot that they completely did this draft two years ago. Mm-hmm. I don't know where well, no, it was like this, it was just was over during, a year. This was during the shakeup. No, they did the shakeup shake right too. Okay, or that's what I mean. Yeah, right I for, after uh, WrestleMania. Yeah, I completely forgot that they did this shakeup and they had the draft and the shakeup. So some people only had like a six month, six to nine month run on one show before they're on the other one. Which uh, horse of a different color, different topic. But did they ever explain the shakeup, or was it just like these guys are showing up because they're here? Yeah, not really. They're just like, hey, this guy's here, guys. Yay. Yes, we do have a correction from the chat room. Charlotte and Alexa have never fought. Charlotte lost to Bailey. Oh, oh. okay. My research okay. guy is think? hired again. Thank you, Tina and Mike. Thank you, Tina and Mike. I'd also like to address something. Uh, Marcus Mann said that they used to call me Fat Face Ben. That is a lie, and he is a horrible person. <laughs> wait, did, wait, did he say this on his interview? Uh, I no, it, I saw it in the, the chat, chat room. Oh, okay. he is a liar, and I take back every nice thing I ever said. Oh, Jesus! Wait, you say nice things uh, off camera. I'm trying to figure out where cool. my chat room's at with things. Uh, but anyways, the chat room. Going, is, hey, the chat going back to the crazy. yeah, go ahead, Bobby. Going back to the gender thing. Um, I guess he wasn't as much of a big uh, draw in India as they thought. Um, because they had to cancel one of the India shows, and mer- like they basically merged the two shows, mm-hmm. and now it's just one big super show. Wow! Wow! Instead of like two separate shows, yeah. So I guess he wasn't as big a star over there as they thought. That was a swing and a miss. Yeah. 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 Well, and I, and I thought W, like wrestling in general is pretty huge there, isn't it? Yeah. I so. It's thought really so. huge over there. Yeah. TNA Maybe didn't, not. didn't ring Kaking or whatever it was. Yeah. Didn't they do yeah. huge numbers over there? Yeah, yeah. They did real, real yeah. well. But anyways. Um, was it just house shows that they were doing over there? Or was it? Were they yeah, it was like two, like two house shows. Or, or? For Impact? Yeah. No, uh, for the India tour that's for WWE. Up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it, no, they don't they don't film anything out of the states for Raw and SmackDown, Other than except the UK. for UK. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and like the main event is Gender versus Triple H. Yeah. Yeah. So you know maybe bring a little bit more star power for that. Who knows? Yeah. Um, I do want to touch back through some of the comments here in the chat room. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave Podner brought up the ten guys outside of Braun are mid thirties and older. So this is an older guys on the card set for this uh for um, the survivor series match yeah yeah um the men's match the has to be the oldest two teams in survivor <laughs> series history well you know he's new but, but, but bobby Roode is like nearing 40 yeah and yeah, that's exactly it is that yeah so all... i mean it's a ben gay on a pole match these are dads all... versus dads who will be the sole dad survivor <laughs> the the, the... <laughs> <laughs> who will take their kids to soccer practice? The guy, the guy with the youngest career is probably Braun Stor- Strowman. Yeah, will really. be the ultimate pappy. <laughs> <laughs> is Braun in his thirties? He's like 32, 30. No, hey, but, yeah, but yeah, still, Braun's in his thirties. Yeah. But Early everybody, everybody like there that's 30. new, guys like Nakamura, Rude, Samoa Joe, uh, Finn, like those are guys that have been at it for ten years at plus. Yeah, for, which for, for in, in every case, which adds another interesting question. What do they do in five to seven years' time? Right. I mean, they they do have guys in NXT, obviously, but uh, and I would say maybe an Adam Cole. He's in in that where he could be a big player in five mm-hmm. years or so. But there's I don't know of the talent that they have in the pipeline as far as the star power that they 
perceived star power they have now. Mm -hmm. So they'll bring over the Bullet Club. Yeah, well, I guess it would depend on money because I'd imagine the Young Bucks make a ton of money on merch. Yeah, really very yeah. young talent, though. I mean, like Jason Jordan was the only one taken out. He did not belong in that match. He's not ready for that match yet. No. No, That's, and, and, and it's not like Triple H replaced like Finn Balor or anybody. And, and if 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 you, nothing says that more than the crowd saying thank you, uh, Wyatt, on exactly. that injury. <laughs> it just he's not that. ready. There, there was a very loud thank you, Wyatt, and hey, na na na, <laughs> goodbye. I think Jason Jordan has oh. to turn heel, or he's got to. After he that. looks like a <laughs> pussy. Yeah, he's yeah. too dopey. Yeah. He, He's too dopey he to turn. He just has a dopey bitch. look on his face. Mm. I, I like, like him, but I just like that he got pedigreed and Kurt Angle was like, eh. "Yeah, he did nothing. Whatever." <laughs> He's like, Kurt Angle was like, like uh, right. uh, "Oh, I guess I should react." <laughs> like, nah, I, I mean, he just became my son, so man, not that. Kurt, the best Kurt Angle him. reaction though was him backstage watching on video and be like, "Oh, oh, oh my gosh, I think I have to go." You know, this is so robotic. You know, if you've seen a lot of Kurt Angle movies, <laughs> they don't they don't really stick out for great acting chops. So, you know, great guy, but man, man. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? We we've completely switched up the tag team match. We're gonna get uh the bar against the Usos. Yep. Don't everybody yes, jump are. in at once. Sorry. No, <laughs> I was reading no, the chat. no. Sorry. <laughs> we are getting the bar against we the Usos. We are getting the boot. Yeah, okay. I'm okay with it. Sure. I'm all right know. with it. The yeah. match hasn't happened before, so... Okay. It's good. that. It's going to be a really good match. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you yeah. guys realize that I'm hearing this as Labar? Labar. The Bar. Not Labar. <laughs> Labar La against La the Usos would be very odd. There you go. That's that's what they're called in France. I mean, everybody be wearing like street clothes and La jackets bar. and, you know... <laughs> if he needs a partner, though, I'm free. There you go. I'm not taking Really? It. You're not... No bumps. No bumps. No. You, you, you'll get that hot tag. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> in Mexico, in Mexico, they're known as Libar, which Labar, Labar, which Lebar. means Lebar. 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 Yeah, well, Lebar. We, we can yeah. plug your your return to the ring is on Stomp Out Cancer, available at IndieWrestling US. Proceeds go to the Amer American Cancer Society. If you've ever wanted to see me with my shirt off in leopard print tights twerking, that's the show for you. They turned you into James Ellsworth. Where can I download this again? I have much more of a chain because I have <laughs> oh, good. twelve hairs on my chain. Well, I think that, I think the point is that that BC did it first, right? <laughs> I guess you're right. That's true. I that mean, is true. I mean, that's not your first. Like that that's is true. Uh, that that's you not my first. first. Yeah, um, yeah, and that's sixteen years worth of mediocrity. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> At least in, in wrestling and managing, I'm the epitome. But uh, yeah, wrestling not not. How many matches have you had? I just figured out, I think I've had like 30 matches. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, half of those are probably Battle Royals where it's just me getting abused. But okay. a, a solid 15 matches. And I've Were won you the two. the T-Rex? You've won two? I have won two. <laughs> what, no, what, did you ask if he was the T-Rex? Yes. Were you the T-Rex? I, I have never been the T-Rex. I beat up the T-Rex <laughs> in Rural Valley and threw him into the ring. But Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, you yeah. did. Yeah, you did. That's yeah, that's right. They were yeah, both in the true. same place at the same time. They were both in the same place at one time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Jeez. Um, yeah, because, yeah, you don't want to take a Wardlow bomb. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Not at my age. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so tag team wrestling. Um, we're also, uh, kind of a, another throwback match. We're going to have the Shield versus the New Day. Sorry, a hooker just walked by. New oh, Day! <laughs> <laughs> it's a very colorful neighborhood, I know. Um, but, uh, the Shield versus the New Day. Yep. Larry? Yep. Shield versus the New Day. <laughs> That's going to be super, right, Larry? It's, it's, it's great good. analysis, I, I, Larry. <laughs> that guy really threw me off. Sorry, man. <laughs> the guy? I thought you said it was a hooker. It was a joke because he was like covered up like the Unabomber. Oh. Well, it's cold outside. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's how you dress in the winter. Yeah. And robbing <laughs> banks. But whatever. Winter. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a good match. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I kind of throw back to like the Shield Evolution days or the Shield and the Wyatts. Like those are those are good days of six-man tags. Yeah. And uh, the New Day was not a part of that. Yeah, especially if the new since the New Day's been like their matches have been really good lately. Mm -hmm. So the stuff with the Usos is a big killer. Yeah. So to see them put together a good match here and is it a tag match or a tornado? Uh, it's just labeled as a versus. It's a tag okay. match, but who knows what's going to happen with these guys? So, okay. uh, what do you think, BC? Uh, one thing I was I just noticed in the chat. That's why kind of 
veered off into space. One thing I miss, I think that match is actually could be match of the night. And I say that without any sort of sarcasm or any sort of, uh, any sort of uh, joking nature to that statement, just because of the personalities you have involved, the charisma and the work rate of the guys involved. And they're always trying to have good matches that those guys don't really phone it in. One thing I miss from this survivor series thing. And the reason I miss all the, the four on fours, I miss those promos of having all those guys. I think, I don't know if the Usos or not the Usos, the new day and the shield have been, cutting promos back and forth, be it online or what have you. I haven't seen it on the shows, but that's to me a missed opportunity because mm-hmm. those were amazing seeing, I think in the eighties there may, there may have been substance added to help those promos, but I mean, they were just off the wall and it's just guys, see, like you said, never together. Like, like ultimate warrior and then into a road warriors and, and whoever was the fourth guy, right? Exactly. Like, like I don't like, remember like seeing them roll off each other and stuff like again, things you'd never saw interact. Yeah. And I don't know what any of them said. And I'm sure at the time, even if I was watching it, I didn't know what they said, especially but, ultimate warrior, but they sounded awesome. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, that's a, a throwback to the eighties that I don't think we see anymore. Oh, geez. I, I love this. Uh, Shane, Stephanie and triple H Lily don't care about the well being of anybody on their rosters. <laughs> and I wish they would all just bail on the <laughs> yeah. match. Uh, Mike is very against the idea of Shane McMahon being the, in in the uh, Survivor Series match. And so Triple he won't it's be fine. wearing his Here Comes the Money baseball jersey no, on Sunday. No, 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 apparently not. <laughs> so I love <laughs> My favorite match of all time is Shane versus Kurt Angle. So yes. I'm, I'm hyped for this match. Uh, yeah, for that to be kind of a callback to that, I think that's good. Yes. And 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 them kind of easing in Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle's going to have a singles match by WrestleMania. I would. Oh, definitely. He's going to have one at WrestleMania. Triple H at WrestleMania, maybe. Probably. That could be Ooh, the like, way it's going. Yeah, yeah like, I could see that. You pedigreed my son that I was kind of upset about, and now we're going to have a match. The good you pedigreed my son. <laughs> the idea that came up at Slice earlier today was <laughs> this is a good idea. Um, that because uh, I we were talking about the match, we're like, dude, there's going to be shenanigans through all this stuff, right? And uh, something setting up, and and maybe uh, you know, Brock does something to to say, you know, I'm not even going to deal with this match, and screws over Kurt Angle from his job, setting up Brock and Kurt, maybe, maybe at Royal Rumble. You know, that could be good. They've done that before. They've done it before. It'd be good to see it again. I think. I mean, we saw Gold, we saw a race at a Goldberg and Brock. They had a milk drinking contest. You think you could have a milk drinking contest? Yeah. Can Kurt be cleared for singles action? Yeah, I, I, I feel think, like yeah. I think so. I think he's got one good one in him at least. All right, I, I would agree. There's discussion yeah. about Daniel Bryan maybe coming back. Here's 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 a comment that I think is interesting. As a wife, Dave Podner saying that his wife mentioned that Kurt looks a little fragile and stiff. So that's something that, that could I've, be. That's something that I've noticed as well. Like I mm. don't think. I think he's got too much ring rust at this point that he's not going to be able to. I ring. thought he was going to drop Shane on his head tonight. Well, between the injuries and, and ring rust, just he hasn't been in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I think he only looks stiff because of the role he's doing right now. I, yeah, I, I, I think that whole just bad acting, like you know, general manager thing is just or, awkward, awkward and out of character. Or is it his neck? I don't know. It, I I do agree. The verbiage that. Uh, verbiage that uh, WWE uses doesn't sound like how anybody on TV or in life talks. Like yeah. they use really weird terms sometimes that they get hum- hung up I on. I go to my local medical facility all the time. What are you talking exactly. about? Exactly. <laughs> local medical. I've never said I'm going to go to my local medical facility. I say hospital or hey, doctor. Everybody, or- I just showed you like just the wrestler is with like a broken like arm Going to a med express. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which well, is yeah. which is why they say medical facility, because if they specify hospital or urgent care center or whatever, for all intents and purposes, they could also mean the guy that they have in the back mm-hmm. that's looking at people like they're their on site yeah, doctor. Uh, but ideally, like it's usually a K Fabe they're going to a hospital because they're injured, right? Yeah. So I mean even like when the, the title and I forget what it was, but it was held up. Instead of saying it's held up or vacant, they would say it's in abeyance. I've never... It's what? In abeyance. What is that? And I may be pronouncing that incorrectly. I know it was said like 50 times. I'd have to... Yeah, that's... No, abeyance. That, that's bad. happened. That's happened. I, yeah. I was sure it was bad. But it, like, that's a weird term. And when you see people uh, conversing, they don't have conversational speak. They have weird kind of... 
I don't want to say WWE speak, but it's just different. There's no difference between Mick Foley as general manager and Kurt Angle when it comes to their dialogue. Mm-hmm. They like honestly, it's it's the same cookie cutter Be- character because they're they're you know? for, for whatever reason they're it's like they're going with the writer and they're not letting them go right and stuff right yeah and it yeah I don't know it I watching the Ric Flair documentary made me really sad seeing those promos yeah. and then seeing guys today like yeah. you've got how many avenues to have guys go out and do stuff and some mm-hmm. of the funniest stuff I've seen guys do is just stuff that they put online which clearly has Kevin no Owens. restrictions Kevin Owens when he was just in the back and berating whoever exactly and decided to call you know you know history his history making <laughs> title reign you know yeah remember yeah. when the, the fireworks kept blowing up <laughs> he gets scared that was the best promo yeah, yeah. i still watch I, but, this but, but, I mean, that's, 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 that's the opera and that's you know we see nxt and people flourish there and then they get to the main roster and they can't adapt to the way they put content together right exactly um they're grabbing the camera guy doing something for dot com getting somebody's attention just to be pigeonholed into a thing that maybe doesn't work out so well because they're not letting them be their character. Exactly. Right? So, exactly. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a huge production stuff gets lost in the wayside and, yeah, and you've got, I mean, God, how many writers, like 20, 30 writers. Oh yeah. That, uh, this guy might, I mean, obviously there's one ultimate boss, but it's, it's kind of, too many cooks in the kitchen oh, yeah. that it just gets diluted or what would be the, the thing that bothers me most, and this is just wrestling in general is being overproduced. What's the harm in giving somebody a mic and going, Hey, talk about this. Here's two minutes go. Just give them the bullet points. If the guy screws up. Okay. We know he probably shouldn't do that anymore or have a guy do a backstage promo for YouTube or whatever. If he hits a double, we'll put it on, you know, a pre-tape. If he hits a home run, we'll send him to the ring to do it for five minutes. I think that is why kind of WWE has maybe two or three top stars. John Cena, household name, meh, maybe Roman Reigns, depending on how you look at it. Brock Lesnar, everybody else, alphabet soup. They're kind of all over the place. Mm-hmm. Like you mentioned, Sorg, that they don't have a, uh, you don't have, back in the day, you wouldn't see Tito Santana, most likely, working Hogan. Granted, they were both babyface, but you get, like, right. you wouldn't people, see People that. are separated. People kind of. Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of segregated from by being faces or heels or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, right? and, and to me, having a class system on your roster and not doing 50-50 booking all the time is a huge benefit. Yeah. It makes people special and gives guys incentive to be special. So that turned into a very, very long-winded rant, but... Absolutely. Uh, going back down the card, of course, we mentioned uh, briefly Alex Bliss and uh, Charlotte. Sorry, my, I'm trying to see if my echo went off when I said... <laughs> Her name, because uh, it happens sometimes. Um, I Alexa think, Bliss. I think set up, you know, uh, you know, all due respect to Natalia, but this is a more interesting new faces uh, match, and apparently, as we we talked about earlier, something that really hasn't happened before. In one backstage segment, they got me more excited for their match than <sighs> Natalia and uh, Alexa did the entire month. Mm-hmm. So, absolutely, I, you know, I I think. Yeah, it, it that 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 could again another show stealer, potentially. Right? I agree. So, are you distracted by people walking by again? I don't know if she was waving or picking her nose. She was waving. Okay. Just oh, well, then just pick your nose back at her. <laughs> I'll show her. Yeah. We and can... and I don't know how I feel about this one, the Miz versus Baron Corbin. Yes. You, you, that's the one you're going it, for. Screw Flair and Steamboat. Okay. Oh right. come on. <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> They're going to look like a pile of garbage compared to this. Now, um, oh, geez. I, I don't, it might be interesting. I don't know what you do other than let Baron Corbin kind of take 90% of the match and have Miz kind of be the baby face. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I, are people really going to get behind Baron Corbin? I don't think I don't think anybody can get behind anybody. I think that's going to be the bathroom break match. I mean, I mean every everybody I, yeah, a little bit, right? Um uh, but on the card. I mean, yeah. Miz is selling the shit out of this one. And he's good. Like that would be Miz. what would make me want to see the match. Would be Miz, but not that real well, yeah. Here's here's the other thing. Miz is the best heel in the business right now. Oh, absolutely. They've also got the card in their pocket that Miz and Maurice announced their pregnancy. Mhm. Yeah. Babies always turn people 
face. That's true. <laughs> well, even as and he it, dressed as Prince Charming. I don't know. It didn't, did. it didn't work for Kane. <laughs> 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 well, as long as Baron Corbin doesn't kick the baby into the crowd. it wasn't yeah, his yeah. fault. <laughs> we should be okay. Oh, geez. It wasn't his fault. Now, this were Vince Russo booking. It would turn out that Baron Corbin was actually the father of the baby. But he'd have to get custody by climbing the pole. And pulling down Judy Bagwell. Take, Absolutely. Pulling down the baby. Yeah, pulling down the baby. Alimony or Judy Bagwell. Match. Some comments from the <laughs> chat. Uh, Tina saying, as a mom, that moment with Charlotte running to her dad made, made her cry. Really genuine moment tonight on SmackDown. I have a story um, to share after this. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mad Mike says, Miz is the best character in wrestling right now. Yes. Uh, that isn't named Dario Cueto. Yeah, but he might be dead. R.I.P. Get well, get well soon, Dario Cueto. Spoilers from that. What? Spoilers. It's, it's it's way after the finale. I don't have El Rey Network. Oh man, Bobby. Well, then what's the likelihood that you're going to watch it? We're it, not spoiling it. It's on iTunes. You. It is well, not not up to that point. I'm poor. Post, right? Season three is not up yet because they just ended. So. Uh, but anyways, and of course, the match that you've all been waiting for, the match that actually is for the title that night on the kickoff show, Enzo versus Kalisto, which they're celebrating Kalisto's birthday tonight on 205 Live. I thought that was Kane for a minute. It looks what was I going to say? Yeah. Go Kalisto. Go Kalisto. I don't know. I want to hear more Go about Kalisto. the birthday. Like which, is, be which is funny you mentioned about the birthday because Tina mentioned a little bit ago that she saw the cake for 205 Live. And then specified that never ends well. No, 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 it doesn't. So you know if they bring out this nice big shiny no, it cake, doesn't. it's going to go horribly awry. Just ask, just ask Jackson Argos. I was just going to say that. I mean, he had a birthday, and Jerry Lawler was there, and it didn't go well. That was probably the worst night in the history of the universe. For Jackson. Yes. No, no, for humanity. For humanity? Absolutely. I, really? it, was, it was pretty enjoyable. I laughed. You're all horrible people. Jackson Did Argos. you watch the video? Yeah, I yeah. watched it twice. You watched it twice? I was sad. I watched it on loop on Instagram. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> I thought that was the funniest thing like on TV all week. Hey, oh, sure. geez. Uh, where could you buy that DVD if you wanted you to watch go, that? You can go see the match uh, for that over at IndieWrestling.us. Some fine stuff, including some great matches with uh, BC Steel at ringside. <laughs> and commentary for that match with Jerry Oh, there you go. A lot the, of commentary absolutely. in those IWC shows. The lady in front of me was giving me the eyes, so she was really enjoying oh, the was she? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. All three teeth. Are you she sure was... it was a lady? We were in West Virginia, so... Mm -hmm. Was she throwing back the complimentary drinks, perhaps, in the uh, casino? Oh, there were people throwing back the complimentary drinks in the casino, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. She was not one of them, though. No? she Her good eye was looking right at me. So, what's, what's <laughs> this that I hear that she, once. you took an awesome cake shot on your birthday? I... Whoever said that's a prick. <laughs> yes, I have been hit with cake on my actual on my actual thirtieth birthday. Oh, yes, it was a rib. I didn't know it was coming. Ah, considering everybody giggled when we went out, I kind of figured out what was happening. Well, at least it wasn't what Chachi got for his birthday, which was a kick to the balls by Jock Sampson. That is the gift <coughs> that keeps on giving, mm -hmm. or stops from giving. Eh, this is mind. the first year where I think I forgot to share that on his birthday. Now was this <laughs> was this on purpose? Yes. Okay. Well, I wait. Now I have more questions. Wait, do we have to? The, okay. So it was his birthday while we were filming RWA, and I was like, "Hey, Jock," and Jock was like roughing up people, like security and things, as a thing. So I'm like, "Hey, you know, do something with with Chachi out there, you know, out there, cameraman ringside." And he said, he just yells in the meeting, like, "I'm going to kick him in the balls," and I'm like, and I wasn't going to give him a heads up. <laughs> oh, awesome! Initially, but I was just like, oh, "Okay, I got to let him know." So meanwhile, there was somebody there that wanted to start filming with us. So that was their tryout was to go take over when he got hit in the ball so he could wow. sell for the match. Nothing says happy birthday like a ruptured testicle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The cowbell ding when he did it was pretty great, too. <laughs> so. All right. So let's take a look. War Games is happening. And, I, you know, I, it, it, it's, it's that case where, you know, we, we kind of looked at NXT going into uh, uh, the last uh, takeover. And, and we kind of worried about it going in. Because NXT, the show, I feel, has not been as great as it has been. I would agree. It, it has not held up. I haven't been following it, so... Right. It, it's really yeah. like, eh, okay, stuff's happening, that's great, right? Um, but we get to takeovers, and they deliver. 
no matter what you think that card is going to look like, they deliver on on that live I, show. I've been able to go into takeovers blind, not knowing anything. You going know what? You still know enjoy something. The match. I mean, I, I have the same feeling about Ring of Honor. I don't regularly follow Ring of Honor, but whenever they come to town, I will be there and I will have a good time. Right? Mm-hmm. I feel like NXT is kind of getting to that state. So, and apparently, if, is this right? Do we only have three matches on here? Wait a minute. Oh, wait, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the preview for this week's episode. I was going to say, War Games is going to take an awful long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, All right. War Games, uh, All right. What's that, what's Fatal that Bobby? Four-way. War Games, Fatal 4-Way. Uh, championship match. I got it here. I got it here, Bobby. So, oh, okay. okay, first of all, like like you said, War Games come back. I, I didn't think WWE would ever do this. That is shocking. It is shocking. They're doing mm-hmm. two rings. Really? Th- that's what they're saying? Two that, rings, mm-hmm. one big gauge. They that, changed the rules a little bit, though. That cuts like a lot of floor space. It does. A lot of floor it space. It does. But I, how's NXT been doing on sellouts lately? That's true, yeah. That where, is, that's where is why, it at? Houston. No, I mean, is it in the arena that they're doing uh, Raw? I believe so. Toyota's, the Toyota Center in Houston. Okay. So, I mean, it's they got the floor space to do it. Yeah, yeah. You I mean, know, it's, it's not get, like they're doing full sale. I WWE has never done a multi ring setup that I'm aware of. Right? <laughs> not that I can think of now. No, no, this was like WCW did this like between this, between their weird three, triple cage thing they did the one year. God, I would love to see that. Uh, between yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, between between the war game, yeah, no, war, World War, World war three. three, where they had yeah. three rings. Like they were all about like let's just throw more rings at the problem, right? Uh, WWE is. Been... They never did four rings. What's that? I mean, they never did four rings and made it symmetrical. Like three rings is kind of awkward. No, there just was nobody OCD enough to do that, Bobby. The parallelogram <laughs> of doom. There you go. There you go. No, no, nothing crazy like an eight sided ring. Six sided six, ring. Six sided ring. Eight sided ring would be an octagon, yeah. and that would be a different. That would yeah, be that's a, different, a totally different. That's, sport. that's, a, that's a different sport. sport. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's that one's not real. It's not real. <laughs> So we have again. It's it, it's a, I think they called it a, like a triple threat war games match. Uh, we have Sanity. We have the Undisputed Era. I still hate the name. Uh, and uh, Authors of Pain and Roderick Strong. One of these things is not like the other. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they they should have got rid of Roderick Strong and put in Paul Ellering. Something. I mean, <laughs> the guy from the. I love that they did call out Paul Ellering. <laughs> Competed in the first war games, that and he's a part oh, of authors, authors, authors of strength, authors of strength, <laughs> Robert Strong, authors of pain. What? Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, never mind. Nice try, Bobby. Nice try. Um, <laughs> I, I now, mean, the Bart Simpson cake. At least you tried. Now, bum, Bobby, bum, bum, Bobby, you said that they they've adjusted the rules for this. Are you familiar with what they're doing with this thing? Um, I from what I gather, they have two shark cages. What? Outside of the ring. Yeah, there's going to be two shark cages, I've heard. And, okay. Like, and, the like, one person's going to start the match for each team, I think. Actually, do you want me to just and, read it from the article? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. According to the article, do, 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 do. Uh, and there's each, no roof. Either. Each group selects one member to start the bout inside the, the cage. So three members start, right? Uh, mm-hmm. While the remaining team members are locked inside shark cages by the entrance way. Oh yes, gotta use those they shark love cages. shark cages in the, like they these do. days. <laughs> After five minutes, the final two members from one team enter the match, giving the group a brief, a brief yet brutal advantage. Three minutes later, the second team's members are released, followed by the final team's competitors. After another three-minute period, once all nine superstars are are inside, the first competitor to pick up a pinfall or submission earns a victory uh, for his side. So we are aware that they've literally built a ring that has chambers that they could utilize for this, right? Yeah. yeah. With, nope. the, with the roof, too. I don't know what you're talking about. That never nah. happened. <laughs> Gotta have a shark cage. Sorry. Uh, the, no, we have shark... <laughs> but we have these shark cages. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe RoboCop can come out and rip the doors open. While we're at it, right? They gotta get their money's worth out of those shark cages. Yeah. Oh, actually, Mad Mike is chiming in that all caps, Sorg, we have so many shark cage ring sets we have to sell. You have no idea. There you go. Can you imagine? They're going to have the War Games set for Christmas, oh. just in time. 
Now, here's man. here's an interesting thought from the, the from the chat room. Uh, Robert McNeely is is in here. He's talking that Roderick is going to turn and join Undisputed Era. Eh. I highly doubt that they're maybe. going to turn Roderick Strong. And Mad Mike still and won't maybe care that about might Roderick be why Strong. they did it. I like Roddy. I like him, but I should, should like him healed, more. Though. Yeah, he I should be know. healed. I don't know. We'll see. He belongs with the the Ring of Honor people. He does. He does. Um, we also get uh, Alistair Black versus Velveteen Dream, which is my favorite build which up is, to a yes, match in NXT right year. now. I mean that that that's gonna be fun. I saw Velveteen Dream for the first time a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. or a week ago, or a day ago, something. CTE has my brain all scrambled. <laughs> An hour ago. Um, five minutes ago, and I first of all, I love the glasses. I love. Why aren't they selling those glasses in the shop? That'll also be around Christmas time. Yes, just in time. <laughs> like I just love everything about that. I think that could be something where we talk about a few years down the line. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm in inve- too excited about it, but I think that's something that could hit on a main stage because mm-hmm. it's Prince essentially. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. which oh, yeah. you know he sang that song, but ah, that was that was that's something else. It reminds me of oh, what the hell is the dude's name? Uh, Prince I.K. Adam Rose. <laughs> Adam Rose? Really? <laughs> the Rose Buds. That gimmick. Adam Rose? Really? I don't see it working right now. And oh. Prince I.K. together? It's it's too cartoony. It was <laughs> like, it's like when we had like, the Los Matadors. <laughs> and The artist formerly known as Prince I.K.? <laughs> yes. Actually, you know what? That's the thing that happened. Yeah, that That's the thing that happened. Yeah. That is a good point. That's, yeah. uh, did he come are, out with Paisley? He did. There yeah. are yeah, many similarities there. Wow. Well, so Bobby, are you trying to say something there? Uh, no, I just was agreeing with uh, the artist formerly known as Prince I.K. And my fond memories of him. <laughs> yes. One of the bright spots in the dying <laughs> days of WCW. Yeah. Um, and third on this list I want to point out is the NXT Championship match. What? Between, uh, uh, <laughs> between Drew McIntyre and Andrade Cien Almas. How? I, c- I call, um, what's her name, Functional Molina. Functional Molina? Because she's a lot better than Molina was. Oh, okay. How did Almas get a title shot at a takeover? <laughs> because he's on a winning streak. He'd be Gargano. He? Yeah. He's done a bunch of other stuff. He turned his really? career he's a around. manager now. Wow. Yeah. Never underestimate the importance of one. Huh. There you go. If like anybody that. out there is looking. Call BC Steel at, at <laughs> IndieWrestling.us. There so you go. Forward. There you go. Hit the contact page. We'll, we'll, we'll hook you up. And of course, the NXT Championship Fatal Four Way match. One I'm definitely looking That's forward for this. Kyrie show stealer. Show stealer, yes. Kyrie Sane versus Peyton Royce versus Amber Moon versus Nikki Cross. Hmm. Thoughts? It's gonna be good. Potential match of the night. Mm-hmm. Show stealer. Any any one of those girls can win. Mm-hmm. I kind of want Peyton to, Peyton that. Royce to win. Just out of nowhere. Like, I, I think she'd be the dark horse in this, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She has the nicest suplex. In WWE right now, finisher, like suplex finisher, the the fisherman suplex. Okay, I think that yeah, that's amazing. That's your that's your bar. It's her and Alicia Fox as far as like the wow. the fisherman suplex. I don't know if I've seen Alicia uh, look take two action. Don't know if I've seen Alicia Fox have a uh, an actual match other than that. Thing for her to be the captain. She, she has a really nice suplex. When yeah. she when she gets the she chance, does. I mean, it's yeah, it's not often. What well, when it is, it's a bright spot. It wasn't. It mm-hmm. wasn't bad. I mean, I, it it wasn't what I expected. Crazy I Alicia so. Fox is the best Alicia Fox I've ever mm-hmm. seen. Oh yes, I can't She's remember any now. other Alicia Fox. There was the um, Bella Alicia Fox. There was. was. Oh, wow. There yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. 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 She was was. <laughs> when she was the third Bella for some reason. Yeah, because we just remember when she opened the sodas. What? When she opened the sodas and just started shaking them everywhere. When she was the first time she was crazy, Alicia oh, Fox. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't remember that. So is that, that on her meds and off her meds, Alicia Fox? Maybe, maybe bipolar, Alicia Fox, I guess. And when of she course, threw the tissue box at Nia Jax. And of course, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, everybody get excited about Cassius Ono and Lars Sullivan. Nice knowing you, Cassius I, Ono. Be a brutal match, I think. You think? I think it's going to be a brutal match. I, uh, I guess Cassius is a big guy, so I mean... These guys are going to destroy each other. Mm-hmm. 
That guy reminds me of Snitsky. A little bit. A lot. He's got the awkward yeah. beard. The crazy mm-hmm. eyes. He's like Shrek meets Snitsky. He might have killed a baby. He might have killed wow. a baby. Wow. Wow, sir. She, the, she asked if the baby would a baby. have to be his tag team partner first, though. Yeah. Jeez. Um, that man is scary. That's the that's yeah. the next monster on I'm Raw. Presuming, I'm presuming they're talking about this. I don't know which match. Actually, I feel like I feel like either the championship or that last match. Uh, Robert's saying that uh, that's a house show match. Which one? <laughs> uh, either that last one or the NXT championship match. Both of them kind of do. Hey, did you know NXT is going to be here in two weeks? I did. It was a lot easier to get tickets this time. I forgot. <laughs> Where's it at? Uh, full or uh, stage A. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, full sale. Yeah, they're yeah, actually yeah. bringing full sale up to. Uh, yeah, Pittsburgh. they're going to be in Altoona on my birthday. I was, I was actually talking with somebody. They went to full sale. I was talking about like when they, he was there when NXT first started there. Really? Yeah. So, I mean, if they're not filling full sale at this point, yeah, I might as well. There you go. Yeah. Just, there you go. Just ship it on up. On, nobody's using it on one truck because I, I want to know what else happens in that that facility from what I, I understand they're very well respected when it comes to like broadcasting yeah and yeah and they make video thing. games do they really yeah they, they have a video game yeah, course they, there they too they teach oh. courses yeah. like it, it's and, and movie making yep stuff like that. it's like multimedia and stuff mm-hmm. yeah. but 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 they, they have that event space and i think they do other events there too so like probably like concerts and things so so it's a stage ae just with schooling and it kind of is just not so many battle raps drunk yinzers yeah i mean it's students that run those shows really that work on those shows yeah free labor labor. pretty much that's genius that Mm -hmm. is the carniest promoter trick i've ever heard but but (laughs) but then their work the way because they talked about that because it, it it's you know you know while nxt is you know building up those people to be you know that ramp is the same as you know angle wise as 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 the ramp that they use and and the lights are the same, and the the camera placements are the same. They film it the same way they shoot raw, just on a smaller scale. So they're not only training those people; they're also training the production people along the way too. So like you could, you're basically getting an inside internship of WWE. What's <laughs> happening? Marcus Mann says Lita's <laughs> unborn baby would be 13, could have been a star. I believe I also saw Marcus say uh, managers don't matter. So. Marcus, who is a manager? The opinions of Marcus Mann do not represent those of anybody else. Jeez. <laughs> but maybe they probably should. But check out Marcus Mann, what Marcus Mann thinks about managers on the Indie Mayhem show from last it week where we talked with it him. It wasn't Snitsky's fault. It wasn't Snitsky's fault. That is, that is what happens when there is only one game in town. You get storylines based off of someone kicking a baby into the crowd. Which clearly was not an actual baby. You know what? I bet after that storyline, they started making people use writers more, too. What what year was that? They might have had a a healthy dose of writers. May Young gave birth to a hand. And how old would that (laughs) hand be? Like, 18? That hand would be old enough for... Nope, not making that joke. Nope, not going to make it. (laughs) Not taking that softball. Nope, not doing it. Use your imagination. But that hand did. Oh, jeez. He ain't got a job. Guys, we feel <laughs> we fuel this comedy on this show with our good friends at Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza right up here, up the street, the Beachview Original, uh, with four fine, fine locations. If you're ever visiting in Pittsburgh, you got four chances to check it out here in Beachview over in Carnegie, PA, you know, towards the airport down on Main Street. PNC Park home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. If you're coming in town to catch a ball game or East Liberty. Uh, out there if you're, I don't know, visiting Google or something when they're in town. Who there is knows? A, there's that Target there. There is a Target over there. We were talking a lot about Target before the show because reasons. Uh, but thank you so much for those guys. Like I said, they're my wrestling talk buddies when I go uh, pick up the pizza from them. Uh, so uh, thank you to them for uh, supporting us for so long. Check them out, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitters, uh, sliceonbroadway.com, and you can order online if you're here local as well. And uh, tell them that the mayhem has sent you. Uh, we are going to get into a fan submitted big question coming up here after the break. Uh, we'll be right back. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Wrestling Mayhem Show. We are back. It is time for the big question. Mike Sorg here with the crew. Larry's here in the studio. Hello. 
BC Steel still hanging with us. Hola. And te- just teaching us about Prince songs. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was going to bust into one. Yeah? Yeah. I used to want to wear a Raspberry Beret to the ring. You know, when you'd find it like a secondhand store. My, my Prince experience is like the Batman soundtrack. That's, that's a good experience. That's, that's Bad things. probably not the best. Nah. No? no. I mean, no. probably not a bad soundtrack, but nah. not the best Prince, right? Not no, the best prince would be what was on gold mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or diamonds and pearls. A little bit of karaoke on gold this week, so absolutely hit that five dollar level on the uh, Patreon for that. And of course, Bobby at J Town is with us, representing as always. Gonna party like it's nineteen ninety nine. Woo! Woo! Good reference. We have a voicemail that I missed last week, so uh, timing might be a little bit off on this. But uh, I think it's still relevant. I think we still have some fun with this uh, question. So here is the question of the week. Hi, guys. This is Tina. I actually have a big question for you guys this week. Um, Overseas, out in the land of the rising sun, Manami Toyota had just retired this past weekend. And she celebrated it by... Uh, putting on a match that was over 50 minutes long. My big question to you guys this week, what is your favorite match um, around that time, like your favorite Broadway type of match? Let me know. So our favorite that we've seen? That's a very good question. What, what's the question? What is I your favorite so. Broadway, Broadway length match or like Iron Man match? Like fifty minute oh. match, long match that you've seen. That is a very good question. I can think of two off the top of my head. One, I actually, I can only think of one because the one I didn't see the whole thing. I think it was Punk and Joe went like an hour, but I didn't see that. So really, yeah, I mm-hmm. saw parts of it. Um, was that a Ring of Honor? I think it was in Dayton. I only know. I think like Matt and Kenny and Jesse and them went, mm-hmm. and um, I think they went to that. I'm. Maybe I just made it up in my head. It's a CTE thing, and it just makes up memories. No, um, the greatest one I've seen, and I can't remember where it's Flair and Steamboat, mm-hmm. and it was mm-hmm. a, it was a crappy VHS copy, but they went sixty minutes, and I would say from match or from minute thirty on, every two count, every pinfall, like people were biting on it. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it, they weren't really doing a lot in terms of general match progression and such but it it just showed i think a testament to how great they were Mm -hmm. that was a really good question she should get like free gold or uh, mayhem points yeah mayhem mayhem points points. she gets mayhem points Mm -hmm. i haven't seen the flare steamboat ones but i've heard a lot of people say that that's probably one of the best series um ones that i've just seen off the top of my head i'd probably go bailey and sasha iron man but that was a 30 minute wasn't it yeah. yeah, but yeah, still, that's like, a long okay. one. That's, okay. that's a long well, match. That yeah. can count. That so I'd go with that one. What about you, Bobby? Um, Okada versus Omega 2. Oh, that, oh, that was shit. that was Time giant. limit draw for an hour. Oh, wait. I don't think I've seen that one. That was from Dominion. From Dominion? Oh. Cause yeah. Because I, I was going to call the Wrestle Kingdom so one. So good. Those well, they one. both were long matches. Yeah, well, that was it was like a forty-five. Minute. It was like forty-five minutes, and yeah. the, the, yeah. you know the six-star match. You know, yeah. like I that that really pops in my head. Like mm. I don't think I've seen a lot of those kinds of matches, right? Like maybe on old like WWF tapes or something like that. But even that, I don't think they really did it all that often, right? Mm-hmm. Like they weren't really in that. I mean, you know, Hulk, Hulk, Hulk Hogan was on top, right? That wasn't happening. Yeah, he was going maybe ten minutes tops. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and um. We'll get to some stuff with Hulk Hogan. And the Goon Hogan. versus Man Mountain 30 Rock. 30 for 30. What's it? Yeah, it gets Man Mountain, <laughs> Mountain Rock, right? But uh, no. And, Two and, hours and 35 set, five minutes. Now, and I've seen a couple long matches a couple of times, ugh, more often than I, I really want to. Like, uh, we've seen matches go 20, 30 minutes. RWA would do it a lot, especially with cages and things like that. Uh, but they did an Iron Man match last month. I have to give a lot of credit. Um,. Shane Andrews and Aaron Williams um, really caught... I was filming ringside, so maybe that had a little bit to do, but even re-editing it. Caught my attention, had a good pace for the most part. It's not it's not Steamboat Flair, but really well-paced. And 
a lot of action, a lot of kicks, <laughs> I guess. Um, the only problems I have with it, because I think the logic kind of broke down towards the end, right? Yeah, it was just a little bit of weird shenanigans at the end. It just seemed unneeded. But they carried it and had people's attention for 60 minutes. And that was really impressive. It's really, really hard. Uh, Chris LaRusso and Brandon K had a 30 minute match mm-hmm. uh, years ago. And I mean, it's really, really hard, not only cardio wise, but to pace a 30 minutes because guys can figure out 10 minutes. Some can figure out 15, 20 in their head. I've seen just, people lose it at 15. Yeah. Some guys do. I, well, some guys lose it after two, but yeah, that's, that's, that's true really, too. really, I'm sure you filmed some of those. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. neither here nor We've there, there, but we've been there, but um, not involving me, by the way, those were classics. Um, but yeah, but like the, the actual pacing of it to be able to put together 30 minutes and know in your head, okay, it's 30 on top of making it good. And on top of making mm-hmm. it actually enjoyable for people to watch is, when people that don't know wrestling ask me to describe it, I say it's like an artist painting, but not knowing what he's supposed to paint. Just mm-hmm. saying, here's these people. They like art. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. And having to figure out while you're painting what they like. Mm-hmm. So for any type of, and I think I saw in the chat, Punk and Joe was in Dayton. Yeah, Matt Tress was actually in there and he, he chimed in on that. Um, he, he says, he actually says, uh, uh, Joe Punk 60 Minute in Dayton was the best that I've ever seen live. And there was another Gory and Pollock fans bring the weapons went 45 minutes. Jeez. So, and that, I will point that out specifically because I didn't know it went that long, but mm-hmm. I watched the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Didn't realize I'd watched a 45 minute match because it was mm-hmm. that good. So, mm-hmm. uh, we just had a good one. It went over 20 minutes um, with uh, Matt Connard and uh, uh, Iceman, Tony Johnson. Tony Johnson, which was really good and unexpected. Really unexpected. Those two, I've one of I would say the five best matches I've ever seen. They did a two out of three falls in uh, Black Diamond. Mm-hmm. One of the five best matches in this area I've ever seen involved those two, to the point of like sta- sitting up and this makes me sound like a horrible boyfriend, but said to the lady, "I can't talk to you. Go talk to her. I need to watch this match." Like that, it was just that I didn't want to miss a second of it. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. kudos to them too. See there, I don't just put myself over. I put other people over. Not Marcus Man though. No, absolutely not. Yeah. And go to IndieWrestling.us. <laughs> from the chat room, from the chat room, we have a couple of them. Uh, Mad Mike says Royal Rumble 1992 with Ric Flair. I think that counts. I think it does. Yeah. But I mean, it, although here's the thing on that match, uh, and somebody can feel free to to jump in, uh, either agreeing with or contrary to my opinion. I don't know if the match was as good, or if it was the commentary that just made that unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I think to me it was the commentary. There was a lot of it, it's one of those that took a village. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And I mean, and, and, and you go something like that, you're not going for sixty minutes in in a, in a Royal Rumble, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of chances to not do anything, right? A lot of chances, right? As a person that did uh, Battle about uh, Mick Foley and Triple H Hell in the Cell. How long did that go? That went at least half an hour. Mm-hmm. That was a long match. That was a really mm-hmm. long match. Which, that was probably my favorite Hell in the Cell match too. The mm-hmm. Triple H versus Shawn Michaels. No, uh, Mick, Foley. Mick Foley. It was the year, it, it was the, the year Rumble. it was the year after uh, uh, Taker. And it was Foley. his it was his retirement one, right? Yeah, so yeah. yeah that was the one. He, that was the one he uh, got fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think two thousand. That, that was probably my favorite. Hell in that the was cell. like his official retirement, and they brought him back as Mick Foley for WrestleMania. Yeah. I think so. It would have been Maybe. February of two thousand. I think that match would have been. Sounds a- no uh, ninety nine, I think it was ninety nine because Taker and Foley was ninety eight, right? Seems right. And it was the year after. Okay. Taker and Foley. Oh no, I feel like there's. Oh no, 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 no. I feel no, like there's, there's another a Kane, year in Kane, there. Kane and Kane and Foley was after that, so it was it was two thousand. You're yeah. right. Okay. Uh, from the chat room, I want to get the rest of these guys in here. Uh, Tina's saying Flair and Steamboat. I think that was uh. I, I, I think there was a Nigel and Danielson one that she enjoyed, too. Uh, Robert says, uh, Flair did so many 60-minute matches, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> Marcus says, Angle versus Lesnar SmackDown Iron Man match is really good, which I think was a 30-minute, but still, it was really good. Um, Wait, yeah. Lesnar and Angle? That was an hour. Yeah. Was that an hour on SmackDown? Yeah, it was an hour. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yep. Pollock versus G- Gory, uh, FBTW... Fans bring the weapons. Oh, Frank, we went 45, six match, says Marcus. Uh, Alex says, I remember a 60-minute death match. <laughs> Holy shit. No. <laughs> no. Uh, Matt Mike says, I'd probably go either Sean Cena from UK 
that went like a good 45 minutes, wow. didn't it, on Raw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one time? 55, 55 minutes. minutes. Yep. Jeez. Puma and Mundo all night long on Lucha <laughs> Underground. Is that Mike? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Alex also says Travis Banks versus Pete Dunne for the Progress World title. I'll have to look that one up. That'd be good. Triple H and Shawn Michaels at Hell in a Cell um, in 2004. Okay. Um, bad Blood. I was just Googling it over here. Um, it was after they'd gone uh, the triple threat with Chris Benoit for WrestleMania 20 and Backlash. Mm-hmm. And everything was building up with it. And it was 47 minutes, 25 seconds. And it was... Jeez. A pretty good match all around. Like they did some really cool spots and everything like that. Like mm-hmm. that's one of my favorites. Really? Yeah. Well, they rewatch that one. I was just gonna say. Okay, that. I don't remember much of that one. I'm trying. To, was that who had the title then? For well, Benoit had the that. title, right? I think was so. Yeah. That? So okay, they were okay. they were just going at it, right? Yeah, they were they were going at it. Yeah. Um, Wasn't there like a Rock three... versus Triple H Judgment Day? What was that? Rock Triple Iron... H Judgment Day. Yeah, Iron Man match took an hour. Hmm. Triple H uh, won six to five over the Rock. I love that nobody has said the WrestleMania Iron Man match between Sean and Brett. <laughs> yeah, I know it, it. It, I, I don't think I thought at the time that was the best match I'd ever seen. I was recently watching the build up to that match. But, yeah, that's the thing is, I thought it was overhyped. Yeah, yeah. the build up to that was really weird. Sean is training like beating up four guys and and mm-hmm. you know training hard, hitting the gym, and there's. Bret Hart gingerly jogging in Canada on the snow and ice. Hey, man, that altitude would kill you. <laughs> See, that's what is they should have said. Is it altitude? No, it, it's just because they're further north doesn't mean they're higher. Well, they're in the Rockies, too, aren't they? Uh, in Calgary, is it? Isn't it in the Rockies? Yeah. Okay, maybe. Maybe. Hmm. I thought they would have been a little bit more rockier. John Denver. Man, never mind. Dumb and dumber, uh, pay no attention to me. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, <laughs> hey, they can't all be winners. Wow. Uh, we were talking about a little bit uh, off air. Um, most of us saw the 30 for 30 Ric Flair uh, documentary that was on ESPN a week ago, actually, while we were doing the show last week. And um, everybody was talking about this last week. It was a, a pretty interesting look at Ric Flair. A couple interviews with him. Um, you know, we were bringing up Hulk Hogan, and he was talking. There, I, I love how many times Hulk Hogan was just like, no, Ric Flair is way better than I am. Well, he, the, that was kind of he, interesting. He admitted it. You know? Yeah, what well, we all know, right? You <laughs> well, know? yeah, I know, but he could very easily not mm-hmm. have done that. Oh, was, absolutely. I think it was smooth. It's a very way. It's a very unique way to let to compliment somebody and everybody go, "Wow, that was awesome." Him to mm-hmm. to say that. So I think that's just the genius of Hulk Hogan. Everybody, everybody's saying, "Hey, isn't he a cool guy?" Like, yeah, man, we totally yeah. forgot that stuff that he said. Yeah, good for him. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it was back in their good graces, brother. It was it was it you, Bobby, that was saying that was like it was kind of sad too, or it was a bit sad. Yeah, mm-hmm. like the 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 whole like retirement thing, uh, like where you said about the "I love you" super kick, he pins him, and then Rick's player immediately just started following his eyes out. Mm-hmm. It was like, wow, I forgot about that, you know. I thought it was amazing that you even touched on, like, he went to TNA. That was yeah. shocking. That, yeah. You know, I'm and, surprised and, I mentioned that. You know, obviously, this wasn't a WWE production or anything like that, so they, they the could footage, do footage, too, and it was, yeah. it was depressing. But he just mm-hmm. didn't want to retire, you know. Mm-hmm. The, the stuff that they used was, like, real bad, too. It was, like, yeah. that old Scott Hall, like, drunk footage that people find on the indies bad. <laughs> yeah it was it, it was not it was not i remember flattering. when that happened and we're just like both these guys had retired you know between foley and flair and foley even um in in i think a wwe documentary talking about yeah i went and I wrestled somewhere and that was a really bad idea yeah. <laughs> you know i mean and, and it was you know because these guys were just bloodying each other and for a lesser promotion for probably not nearly as much money. And it was just getting like thrown on steel on, uh, on tacks, on tacks yeah. and getting pants in a cage match. And... Yeah. It's just, it yeah, just was, was so, <laughs> so awkward. And it felt, it feels very like when you see like weird late day WCW and seeing that footage again, like it, it gave me the same feeling. Right. Yeah. The, the read stuff was pretty depressing too. Mm-hmm. That was the read thing was, it was depressing, but it was also unique because they they brought up, and I think somebody might have said it in the chat. I think I glanced. If not, I'll take credit for it. 
the uh, Triple H thing where he talked about Flair telling people what they want to hear, and where he basically said Flair lied to him mm -hmm. about the, yeah. the the drug testing and stuff like that. Yeah. And it was unique for Triple H to pretty much say, "Yeah, I." He didn't use these words, but saying, "Yeah, I told Ric Flair when we're going to test his son," essentially saying, "Make sure it's not in his system." Mm -hmm. uh, that was just a unique. Mm -hmm. I'd say behind the curtain, but then they also had Taker in a unique. Yeah, that was weird too. In a unique role, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, doesn't even sound like him. That's crazy. No, and and, and 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 there was something else. There was something else I was watching. I feel like on the network. Oh, and the Goldberg thing. Yeah, was another mm -hmm. one where yeah. they showed Taker. Like is that was it, that was that Mania too. The one Mania. he retired. Yeah. yeah, the one he retired. Like I feel like we're in this this zone now where, um, the sunglasses off. We we. Since Taker's retired, we're allowed to see him be not Taker, right? That I know this is going to sound very old school and and like I'm an 80 year old man that used to work territories, but I hate seeing certain guys completely kill themselves, like expose themselves. Mm -hmm. like, and Taker being one of those, he's one of the last guys that Kayfabe was still alive for. Yeah, like, and I, it was it was in there was still that magic around him. Yeah, I mean, I understand that we are in 2017. But it's like, man, that's the one guy. And somebody put on Twitter that uh, that Taker had made snacks for the crew. And I'm like, man, now I picture him in an apron. Like, would you guys like some cucumber sandwiches? Well, he, uh, uh, the guy who did the documentary, he was talking with uh, JR on his podcast. And he was telling the story about interviewing Taker and mm -hmm. how he was like when he like went to the guys went to his house. He was just like playing with his kids and stuff, and yeah, he like made everybody s snacks and shit like that. And he's a he was, dad. Like, he was like the nicest guy in the he's world. A dad. He's like, he's like, hi, I'm Mark, sandwiches. and all this stuff. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I believe Mad Mike made a good point in the chat about Taker possibly not being retired. Oh yeah, I, we, I mean yeah. it's it's about that time where we like are we going to see a lightning bolt on Raw? Or did the lights go out? Is that t like that type of hype? Mm -hmm. I don't know who he would wrestle. I mean, Cena. Well, they what? said they said the twenty fifth or episode or anniversary of Raw or something. He was scheduled for. Yeah, he's supposed like to Raw. be. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's being suggested in the chat room, maybe Braun. Yeah, Braun. That's true. Would be kind of interesting. I think the, Oscar. I think Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I think the bloom is off the rose because I don't think beating him means. I mean, he's still Taker, but meaning mm -hmm. as much. But if he wrestled Oscar. <laughs> I, I, Oscar's gonna retire dude, the Undertaker. You know what? I she, I would watch the, the hell she, out of that. She's the one that could do it. Yep. I'd 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 watch that. I mean, hey, we're we've seen <laughs> we've seen an intergender match with James Ellsworth and uh, Becky Lynch. Maybe that's, that's a, next. That's an interspecies match. Well, that that was animal abuse. That's hey, what that was. As a man that used to <laughs> that barely has a chin himself, I take offense to that. <laughs> and also, I think I, I remember an early match of you being light dropped by the fans in a, in your leopard yes. print, uh, where an eight year old were you uh, wearing a dog collar? I was not. Well, that was after the show, but that was something entirely different. <laughs> um, where an eight year old went to pin me, and he got a handful of BC, and I said, "No, no more, no, do not, no." <laughs> it was the worst idea I think I've ever seen a yeah. wrestling it, show. <laughs> it was not good because. You'd be surprised how much a little kid's leg drop hurts. Like, I wanted to get up and just start taking out children. I think I could take at it least six or seven, eight-year-olds before they it got would have been Hulk Hogan. You would have been dead. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Although, this this hurt just as much. Stupid kids. Jeez. I love this. Robert saying, uh, Taker versus Demento at Raw 25. There you go. <laughs> Wait, is he still alive? Demento? Yeah. I would. I have no idea. I mean, I'm sure you dress up. You know what? Dress up like Mojo Raleigh is Damien it's Demento. Damien Demento. <laughs> Why not? Mojo Demento? Yeah. Mojo Demento. That was my improv name. Team name. We don't get Demento. We stay Demento. Mojo Demento. But anyways, going back to the, the, the 30 for 30. I thought it was an interesting look. You know, I, I, you know when we get documentaries, I, I feel with WWE, you know, they're kind of glossed over, right? Um, I mean, yeah, we're getting things like the Scott Hall story and things like that too. But Ric Flair isn't going to be that human of a story as we're going to like see. The, I like that they animated a lot of it too. I thought that was a neat touch. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that, that, that definitely was a lot of fun. I think it shows the highs and the lows that come with being a pro wrestler at that level. Mm -hmm. Like even for some indie guys, never being home and traveling and and the stress that goes with it, but. 
not to the extent of Ric Flair. Like, well, it's also a bygone era because it was so sure. different. The way that you traveled, the kinds of matches that you had in that era. I can't think that anybody these days on the indies is having that sort of experience that Flair did. Yeah, nobody's... Or, or not indies or, or just... I want to say on the indies, but kind of in general. Yeah, I don't anywhere. think anybody has that kind of experience, yeah. no matter who they're with. Nobody's going 350 matches a year. Uh, nobody's going... Dr- then driving three, 400 miles, partying all night. With, yeah. I, that just doesn't happen. It's a different... I think it's a different society, too, but... But also, and we've talked about this before, it feels like, you know, through NXT, I think they're kind of educating people coming up. The wrestlers have seen those stories. I mean, you know, everybody come up in wrestling now, you know, much like us are in the same age range where they've read the books of Mick Foley and Chris Jericho and heard the stories of Ric Flair's and and seen, you know, maybe coming up in indies, you know, a broken down honky tonk man, you know. Or Virgil's or or whatever. Also, and saying, was waiting for that one. And saying, and saying, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, that guy that I saw in front of ninety thousand people in the Silver Dome is, you know, this guy now at this indie, you know, you know, begging for twenty bucks for a picture. And, you know, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, and being a little smarter about their career and how they hit the road. I mean, how many times when you're watching, um, um. Uh, WWE road uh, road road trip right along right along thank you yeah yeah how many of those guys are just like yeah I don't really party I gotta, I'm gonna go to the hotel room and do blah 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 right yeah exactly and like the they're putting cameras in the car so you can see literally what they're doing along the road mm-hmm. then you have other shows like Total Divas that you have all of them kind of you know doing their thing mm-hmm. as well so they have cameras on them more often at this point than I think they have in the past. Well, they're not doing as crazy as stuff either, unless it's something set up for a reality show. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So even to that point, I think the WWE is having a little bit more hand in, yeah, we're going to script this out for you guys. You guys are going to do this. So you have to be on your best behavior because there are cameras around. There's this going on. Right. And it, I think takes some of the. A little bit of pressure off, or at least a lot of the, uh, until you have a smattering of videos and pictures come out. That, you know, that does show happen. some other things that happen. So, yes. but I mean, but again, and I think that social media thing probably probably makes that a big thing too. Because if you're somewhere and you're being crazy, that'll get out. I mean, we've all seen the video of um, was it like uh, uh, John Cena and and Umaga like chopping somebody, yeah. you know, and John Cena yelling Umaga, you know, uh, at, at some bar somewhere with everybody drunk. There's a uh... The NFL does a rookie symposium every year. They bring in the kids, the kids, the new players to the league. I, I saw this on the Rocks. Uh, oh, what the hell is this show? Ballers. Ballers yeah. yeah, they did this on Ballers. Where they kind of say like, hey, these are the stats. This is what happens. Women are going to want to be around you. Pretend there's always a camera, that type of line of work and say that you're there's certain stuff to be expected because of the position you're in. And yeah. I think that's kind of a little bit more what it is. But there's still guys that. I mean, if you look at wrestler deaths over the years Mm -hmm. and you look at what's caused them, either certain things that can enhance physique or certain things, there's still guys that do that. So, and there there always will. Yeah. Hopefully there's less now, but there there always will be. Yeah. What you've got going on with it, too, is look at how many sexual harassment suits have been brought. I am. Or allegations. I'm I'm going to say allegations, not even suits. Allegations. So, I think that people are on their, you know, they're, they're making a point to not put themselves in stupid situations mm-hmm. where something can be turned or taken the wrong way. I was just thinking about this today with all the uh, uh, sexual allegation things going on. I am shocked that we're not hearing about this from wrestlers. That blows my mind. Like, it, mm-hmm. it, like where uh, I am just waiting for the day that I flip on and you hear it. That it's Vince McMahon or it's somebody else like big in wrestling, John Cena, Roman Reigns, you know, who knows, right? In, in the Ric Flair thing, how mm-hmm. many women did he say that he slept with? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, which, if you do that math, that means he was having multiple women a day. I don't want to say Ric Flair's lying. However. 
but still, I mean, <laughs> even, yeah. even if that's an exaggeration, which we all know it's an exaggeration, mm. that exaggerated number, I don't think it's that exaggerated in comparison. Yeah. I mean, it's a difference between you saying that you slept with 10,000 people and Ric Flair saying he slept with 10,000 people. I'm only at five. And I like... I like 5,000? Yeah, five. 5 that was just today on the way here. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> The Ric Flair's openly said, they've said it in documentaries, that he would come out with just his robe on. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm guessing that there were flight attendants that weren't like, yeah, Ric Flair's dong. Like, I'm sure there were ones that were offended or upset. Like, that stuff could come out. Although I think Ric Flair people would be like, yeah, next. I mean, there's so but many. There's probably a perception, too. Like, this is getting a weird section here. You know. President Bush doing that thing, Bill Cosby doing that thing, versus a pro wrestler that all right that pretty much talked about womanizing every <laughs> week true. on television in the eighties. That's, true. that's so, true. So so maybe that's the case. But 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 for somebody newer, like, you know, or or, or somebody more powerful like a Vince McMahon or or one of the wrestlers that, that's a little higher on the cart. Yeah. You know, like that that that's like I feel like it's inevitable. For some reason. I, it, I think it'll I, happen know, eventually. Yeah. I mean, there have been smatterings over the last... In the 90s, there were smatterings of sexual abuse and yeah. e exposing and stuff like that. And you've heard then things... I, and I know I we've all heard stories from shoot interviews or talking to people that used to be in certain three-letter federations about things that have happened. You know, uh, you know, yeah. casting couches and things, with, with especially the women wrestlers. Randy Orton pooping in bags, allegedly. There's that too. Um, you know, I mean, that's, you know, that's something that is definitely out there. Does that get rolled into this like weird publicity now? Especially then we see something you know, like, well, hey, Ric Flair was all about it. You know, and, and I don't know if it was sexual harassment or anything. I'm sure there was. Let's be honest. You know, Ric Flair, Ric Flair. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but, um, but, uh, you know, it, it's kind of an interesting thing that I'm just, I'm just expecting at this point. I, I think it'll take, one like one story and then the floodgates will open mm -hmm. and i mean because yeah. yeah yeah i mean that's what's happened with everything else yeah, the person comes out and makes an allegation and then you have a bunch of other people calling out of the woodwork essentially saying you know i was afraid to say something but now that you've stepped forward and said it you're i was also assaulted or i was also this happened to me i had a similar experience and then you wind up with 20 people making claims over a certain period of time mm -hmm. which yeah, that, that's if I don't say this to curry favor with the, the fairer species or the fairer sex, but it just shows how hard it is not only to be a female in the entertainment industry, but magnify that by a million times. Like I've told, I think uh, every female trainee that it is so much harder for a female to earn respect in wrestling. Oh yeah. And I would say that's all of entertainment. And oh yeah. Some of the, some of the girls that we've had on girls, I say um, women that we've had on for the Indie Mayhem show, they've mm -hmm. talked about how different it is. Mm -hmm. between women in the industry versus men in the industry. Yeah. And that's on the indie level. That's not talking, you know, the, the larger scale stuff. That's the people that we deal with, with local. Yeah. yeah I mean, I've, been it's to, hard. I've been to all girl shows and hearing the horrible things called out to the women it, in the ring. It amazes me. I mean, me, uh, just yeah, NXT a couple of years ago. I was just going to say, it amazes me that some of the stories and one of the ones specific, I know there was something with NXT of, of things being yelled and, and said, and mm -hmm. I've heard stuff that if it were said to like my mother or my girlfriend, I would just punch somebody, even me, the buggy whipped arm, like just vile things. I'm like, how can you say that? God to, bless to a person. Exactly. Yeah. God bless all women that have to put up with that. And that's just, mm -hmm. this is a weird, this is a weird psychological thing, but that's not just entertainment or wrestling. That's every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, Tina just pointed that out. She's like, not just in entertainment, any male-dominated industry. Mm -hmm. And you see, you see it all the time. Like women walking down the street, you get the the cat calls, you get the whistles. Yeah. And it's like, seriously, I'm just walking down the street. I'm going to the grocery store. I'm going to the post office. I'm going wherever. Seriously, um, a lot of my friends have have been talking about they'll walk down the street and somebody will. You should smile more. I'm not going to smile. I don't know who you think you are that you, you can tell me that I need to smile. And again, that's just friends that I know walking down the street. Y you take that to a stage mm -hmm. and it just magnifies it. Where there's almost a built-in excuse. Ah, that's the wrestling business. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which yeah. is, 
I've heard people say that for all kinds of horrible behavior, and that's that's garbage. And I, I will admit I've said it not to not to abusing women, but alcohol and, and that that kind of life. I was like, well, it's wrestling. That's what people in wrestling do. Mm. And it's like now in my older years, I'm like, that is the dumbest thing possibly that I've ever said or that anybody could say. Like you're, you're putting in a built in excuse for horrible behavior. So if there are any guys not saying there would be that listen to this that have ever been down that route of being an asshole, stop. Because you're mm -hmm. embarrassing yourself. And like, I'll just end on this because I apologize. I've, I've totally stolen the 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 topic here but does does any of that ever work like if somebody goes hey honey smile more oh well i'm gonna sleep with him now like does that really <laughs> does that really is there some guy that's thinking like i got it if i tell her to smile she's gonna be mine yeah i can't say that that would ever have <laughs> no nope see the things you don't think in your 20s or late teens seriously nope. Well, anyways, we've learned a lot from this episode. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is, is it, what I learned from it? wrestling. <laughs> and now for a very special episode of Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, <laughs> guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Well, let's go first. Uh, I learned that it is very easy to sew two different shirts together, and it can help <laughs> you merchandise two separate t-shirts. Hmm. You mean Raw Shield? Absolutely. Or SmackDown Day. I, I don't think they did that, but they Smack could. SmackDown. Nope. Smack Day? Nope. Yeah. Smack nope. Day. Nope. Nope. Turning off my mic. Sure. Click. Sure. Uh, what about you, Bobby? What did you learn? Um, I learned Braun Strowman is a destructive force of nature. <laughs> um, and he's also amazing. He destroys your rings. He destroyed the ring. He... Almost destroyed Shane McMahon. Right? Yep. yep. Uh, so many things. In, in one year, Braun Strowman has, like, somebody said that the, how they increased the Twitter limit. Like, you could not fit everything that Braun Strowman has done this year in a 280 character tweet. Huh. Like, you had to do two, like, an additional tweet. So, go Braun. What about you, uh, Larry? Don't interrupt Paul Heyman. Don't interrupt Paul Heyman. Or more specific, don't propose at a wrestling show. I don't think he would have cared if people didn't interrupt him. I mean, him. proposing is fine, but they, they proposed in the middle of the promo? Yeah. Then they got kicked out. Did they get kicked out? I heard they got kicked out. They didn't get kicked oh, out come on. That. There's yeah. no way. WWE does not look kindly to matrimony. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, the divorce rate is high there. Well. I learned the most awkward thing you can uh, uh, yell that's not offensive in, during a match is leg wrestle. <laughs> this happened. This happened at Rise this weekend during the Matt Connard and uh, Iceman. I keep forgetting his name. Tony Johnson match. That's why somebody referenced leg wrestling. In yes. The line. Okay. Yes. Bradley, the, well, they were they were they were kind of kicking each other in the leg. They were like grabbing each other's leg and everything, like you know, you know the, the kind of double kick thing. So he just yelled leg wrestle, I'm like they're like, and they yelled back, "This is not that kind of match." <laughs> uh, leg wrestling. You can Google leg wrestling. It's not. Oh yeah. It, it's a it's a weird. I don't think that's he ever posted been done. a video of it afterwards. <laughs> well, you know what? Apparently, he is a fan of leg wrestling. It's a very specific genre. <laughs> you can uh, check out my new company, Leg Wrestling, uh, coming this fall. Yes. Thank Leg you. Raw. Thank you, Bradley, for that moment. And, and, and Rise, if you guys uh, make it down to the Connellsville or yeah, over to Bethel Park this weekend, those guys are having some shows and it's been some really good stuff. Uh, from, what's that? I learned this week's story. What did you learn? Because you were at that show, too. Oh, this has nothing to do with the show. Okay. I learned that I need to spend more time with BC Steel. You spent enough time with BC Steel. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the the Missy and BCS show will be debuting this fall. Right after leg wrestling. Right after leg wrestling. Tune in. Tune yeah. in. Oh. From the we chat room. Leg our first segment. Mad Mike learned that Ric Flair knew how to throw a punch by punching a piece of string until it didn't move. Maybe Shane yeah. McMahon could learn that. Hey, there you go. I think it's a little <laughs> late for him. Wow. <laughs> Uh, Robert learned that uh, he learned that Sister Abigail is officially dead. 
Wah, wah, wah. Because why it just came back when you ignored yeah. it? Is it? Is that why? I think so. That was the viral uh, infection they got rid of. If t- <laughs> if two weeks goes by, it doesn't happen in wrestling. Right. It, it never um, happened. Alex learned that Johnny Mundo created the greatest wrestling faction. That was what? in the promo. That was the worldwide, worldwide underground, uh, in Lucha Underground. Oh. Uh, it was in the the Lucha Underground season four preview. This is completely happening. That's awesome. Uh, Wheels learned that he loves BC Steel. Wheels, you are a gentleman and a scholar. There you go. There you go. BC Steel. Yes. Thank you for joining us. You are very welcome. Oh. I I enjoy the view. I enjoy the this this, this couch. It's comfy. Okay. Uh, are you still podcasting these days? Uh, yeah. I may even uh may even uh, release another one. I actually have what? three episodes recorded. Uh, I just need to edit them and send them out, or beg Jesse to do it. But uh, you can find it on Twitter at one SF Podcast. I I assume that was a segue into plugs. At one SF Podcast on the Twitter. I'm also on the Instagram BC underscore Steel, where I not only put food pictures but also wrestling promos and posters and the occasional rant on fantasy football do people wrestle food in your pictures no they leg wrestle food in my pictures i have to ask because i saw your one promo for rise where you were doing your promo in front of a giant poster of once upon a time yes yes i was and i referenced once upon a time in the promo that's how you do it kids there you go that's an awesome show bc steel i have not i don't know i've watched a little bit missy's the fan I five, of course. There's segment two. There Something you go. else that we have in common. There you go. Sorg is more and more afraid of this. <laughs> Larry, he's kind of on the internet. Somewhere. Somewhere. He has I have, people I have for that. people for the Twitters. Yes, he does. But he mostly joins us here. On the couch. On the couch. There you go. Yep. Bobby of J-Town just survived extra life yeah, this I was, weekend. I was going to say, uh, just want to take a moment to thank everybody who watched this weekend, donated. Um, you can still donate. I'll put I'll put the link up on my social media at Bobby F J Town and my my Facebook page. Um, we uh, almost hit our team goal. We st- and you can still donate till the end of the year. Uh, we had a blast doing it. I got delirious at ten o'clock in the morning playing Watch Dogs Two, um, and it was causing traffic accidents. And you know those posts that go up and down, like in cities. I was flipping cars with those and just laughing like a madman. It was fun. Is this on the feed it's somewhere? A good time. It probably is near the end. Yeah. Well, you're gonna have to clip that out or something. Yeah, it was it was fun. We had a good time. Awesome. <laughs> uh, and of course, producer Missy. Hi. She's with us. You didn't forget me for the show. No, you, you're such a big <laughs> part of it. You forgot me for the last show. Well, I'm trying to be better. All I can do is try to be better. <laughs> you just forget me. She's around. She does things. I'm around. She's wife of wife of the show on Twitter. Yes, and I'm gonna pimp some things here in Beachview that I'm working on. Okay. So we've we've got the bragging about Beachview with La Katrina. Uh, come have some Mexican food with us on Thursday, and then next Saturday Beachview is doing a small business Saturday, and we're gonna have some great community stuff here along Broadway Avenue in front of the new studio space. Mm-hmm. So two good reasons that you should come to Beachview in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, stop by. If you haven't seen the studio, there's a good uh, open house chance to do that. Yep. So please uh, please do that. So, um, thank you everybody. Check out everything SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of great stuff happening, including the return of Panel Riot. Some guy named uh, Lunchbox uh, that used to be on this show has uh, returned with a new cast and format uh, for that comic book podcast. And it's a lot of fun. So please go check it out and check out all of our friends over there. At SorgatronMedia.com. And check out BC Steel's podcast, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, please follow, subscribe, share this show if you dig this stuff. And join us here every Tuesday at Live.WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Thank you to an amazing crew that was hanging out with us all night long in the chat room and becoming a big part of the show, too. Please drop those voicemails and those emails. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Until next time, Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.